So without further ado, let me bring on our guest tonight. Um, he has performed with just an absolute murderer's row of artists, including Sonny Rollins, Hank Jones, Gerald Wilson, Chris McBride, Ron Carter, D.D. Bridgewater, Wynn Marcellus, Count Basie Orchestra, Sean Jones, Camille Thurman, Jasmia Horn. That's just a few of those names. He's also taught and lectured at such wonderful institutions as UNC Greensboro, the Peabody Institute, Rutgers University, Juilliard, and uh, Jazz Music Institute in Brisbane and the Sydney Conservatory of Music. So quite a list there as well. So we're really excited to welcome to talk about the art of big band drumming tonight, Mr. Jerome Jennings. Hey, Andy, how you doing, man? Good to, good to see you. You as um, well, so glad to have you. Yeah, so I don't wanna take too much time. I, I, I was an amazing introduction, thank you. Um, I just want to get right into this. Uh, we, we have a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about big band drumming, the concept. Um, I noticed that many, many of us who are drummers, we get a lot of instruction from our, our various uh, big band teachers and uh, conductors, and, we, and, and, and they, always, they often don't know what to tell us, uh, except for you're doing, you're doing something wrong, or they'll smile if, they, if you get it right which in a lot of ways is how it is on the scene. But I want to, I want to kind of dispel that, that, that mystery of, of, of big band drumming. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen here and we can get right to it. Okay. I want to get to some listening so we can keep moving right along. Okay. So we're dealing with the art of big band drumming, but before we do that, I want to get into uh, the drum in general, what, what it was used for originally. So drums were used early on as a uh, various rhythmic calls were, 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 were used to communicate various messages, right? It could be the birth of a child, it could be a wedding ceremony, harvest season, a funeral, celebrating nature. Uh, in various celebrations, but I want you all to keep in mind that 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 relaying of a message. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on here. Now, um, let's talk about the roles in actual big band drumming. Okay, so in big band drumming, we have we 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 have to contextualize what we're doing. We have to understand what what our roles and what our role is in that number one the first thing you need to be able to groove you have to groove okay what does it mean to groove um well beyond grooving you have to set up the band the band has to be set up right let's get into groove so the groove and overall vibration and energy is very important within big band drumming okay um, the spirit of the band relies heavily on the drummer. And just like we spoke about early on in, in African drumming, there was ritual, ritualistic messaging, right? It's very important that we play with confidence and that we play and understand our, the, the function and our function and role through each, through each tune, through each section of the tune, right? And you need to relay this message to 17 people. You have to keep that in mind. So whatever you play, it has to be with clarity and sureness. All right. Um, and the following points that I'm going, we're going to talk about right now, they all work in tandem with each other. So the first point I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about here is establishing the groove with the bass player, banjo player, guitar player, if they're there. Um, it doesn't matter what type of groove it is. You want to play and establish that groove early on. It's very important to play it with clarity so that all 17 people, the person furthest from the drums can feel and hear that groove, okay? That's very, very important, regardless what it is. Calypso, mambo, bembe, two beat. We have to play, we have to play with clarity and we have to groove with that bass player, okay? Number two, we have to bat, play in balance. It's very important to play in balance because if you don't play in balance, things can be off uh, volume wise. Balance is all about volume and playing with clarity, okay? So we have to be careful with that. Number three, 
We have to deal with sound. Sound is so important. To have the right sound. We have to use, we, there's some, sometimes we can use things to aid us in that sound, whether it's brushes, whether are we playing with mallets, are we playing with high, are we playing a hi-hat? Does the tune require us to go to a cymbal now? Okay, we have to know these things to, to, to use various color and, and or, or to color uh, the music and to, again, relay the message to the band to let them know something is about to happen or something is happening. All right. Um, one thing that a lot of the drummers don't think about, younger drummers, is short notes and long notes, right? Within the ensemble, we have to understand how to articulate short notes and long notes um, it, uh, on the drum kit, using the drum kit. How do you create a long note? How do you create a short note? How do you create a long, how do you, act, uh, uh, um, how, how do you uh, accompany a long phrase, a short phrase, right? So we have to understand that. Um, all of these things, establishing a groove, playing in balance, sound, long and short notes, they're all devices that are used to set up the band, okay? That's our entire, our entire uh, goal, right? Objective should be to accompany the band, give them what they need, okay? It's very important. Now, why? Why is it important? Well, the band has to play together. It's very important that you understand that in a big band chart, right? If we going from A to Z, between A and B, B and C, C and D, it's sections within the music. We have to be able to set up the band. The band is playing harmon the band has to play harmony, the band is playing melodies. And the band is also playing rhythms. We have to help them establish the correct, correct rhythmic execution. I'm thinking rhythmic in particular, but we can also help with harmony and melody as well. But let's think about rhythm for now. The band needs our help. Trust me. Bands, when they play upbeats, when they have beats on, when they have strong beats, downbeats, particularly upbeats, they don't always, they don't sound together unless they have help from the rhythm section. And I'm speaking particularly to, again, our drummers. That's what we're here for, okay? That's why we have to do that. We need to help them play downbeats. We need to help them feel the upbeats, right? By giving them a strong downbeat so that they can feel the end of one. All my drummers, they understand what I'm talking about. So if you're here, one, two, three, four, one, and, one, and, two, three, four. We have to give them that downbeat. One, two, three, four, and, right? down up it's a it's like a pendulum we have to do that for them okay in most cases that's what that's what needs to happen so how do we do that well we dealt with that we have to give them a strong downbeat if there's something on the end of two that's being played we got to give them something on two so that they can feel where that strong beat is so they can come and play that down that play that end of two together the entire point is to play together. And the more people in the band, the more horns in the band, the more they need you to play those setups uh, in a very um, uh, in a very plain and uh, uh, understandable, digestible way, okay? So, upbeat, downbeat figures, we dealt with that, okay? So, Let's talk about the bands. Let's get into some of these great bands. Now, why is it important for us to understand the legacy and lineage of jazz, uh, big band playing, right? Well, big band playing, it has a very rich legacy. We have jazz age big bands of the teens and 20s. We have, we, we go from, from, from there to the swing big bands of the 30s and 40s, then we get into bebop later in later on in the 40s and 50s and to this day. Then we have the Afro-Caribbean bands, Machito and others, Tito, Puente and Rodriguez. Then we have third stream, we have experimental fusion bands, and also we and now we have uh more modern takes on what a big band can be. It's it's good for us to really 
get deeper into listening to these bands just to, to, to figure out how to play, what to do. The only way you're really going to know what to do and what to play is by listening and playing to these recordings and just really sitting with them and checking them out. That's really the only way. All right. And, and if you are, if you're blessed enough to have a, a private teacher, bring the recordings to them and say, what, what's happening? What is this drummer doing? We have that's very important. OK. Um, now. We have to study the history of this music. The history informs us. It informs what what to do. What do we do when we play? How do we set up the band? When the bass player is playing what's what we call a two beat, what do we do to complement that? If we if we hear the band is coming out of a, a early jazz age sound and articulation, how do we play as drummers to accomp accompany that? Well, listening, having an, a, a, a having a serious grasp on history it, it, of the of these recordings and bands, it will inform us on how to groove. It'll inform our sound, having the proper sound. It'll help us in beginning the tune. What do you do? How do you begin this tune? It will help us with setting up the band, right? Right. And it'll also help us with ending the tune. There's 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 ways that we can end a tune that can, again, help aid the band, move the band along. Right. Have help them to play together. OK. So we must contextualize historically. That's very important. So I, I want to get into um, the, the, the advent of the big band. Now, it didn't technically take shape until the 20s, but the grooves and orchestration of the early of the mid 20s um, from from big big band drummers, drummers who were known for their big band playing. We're going to get into some of those drummers. Of course, we can't get into all of them, but those earlier bands, those earlier, excuse me, those earlier drummers, <laughs> they actually were playing rhythms that were articulated from drummers uh, from the earlier periods of of jazz music, the early beginnings of jazz music, people who were playing, uh, people like Warren Baby Dies, the person we're looking at right now, uh, people like Zudi Singleton and, and, and Tony Sabarbo and uh, Andrew Hillier, right? And others. So what we're going to do is we're going to check out right now, let's check out a recording and let's listen to uh, we're going to listen to Jelly Roll Morton and his Hot Peppers. We're going to listen to a tune called The Chant. And what I want you all to check out, I want you to listen closely to how he articulates um, the beginning of this piece. What does he use to, to, to feel, to set up the band, right? A lot of cymbal work. You're going to hear what's called a shimmy beat, right? We have to also understand, again, historical contextualization. This music was designed for dancing originally right i want to take it a step further i want you all to understand that there were certain specific beats that went with specific dances right so for instance in during the roaring 20s as it was called in the united states there was a dance very popular called the charleston there's a beat that goes with the charleston right and the charleston is a day is a dance that came directly after a dance called the shim sham shimmy there's a shimmy beat and you're gonna hear uh andrew hilliard play a shimmy beat throughout okay so let's check out the chant okay so the reason why Play, uh, Jelly Roll Morton, and I, and I know he's not considered a big band. Uh, he's not considered to be a a a, a, a big band um, leader, band leader. But he is one of the first, if not the first, to have very uh, very involved arrangements. Right. So 
the drummers with him, Baby Dies, uh, Andrew Healy, they they had to be able to orchestrate right throughout through through these many comp complicated pieces. So that was the chant. Let's keep moving. We're gonna get into now a uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into someone who it was considered the first to to have a a big band uh in a in in a in a more um more or less uh jazz age big band um and kaiser marshall is the accompany accompanying drummer with uh fletcher henderson right don redmond fletcher the fletcher henderson band don redmond arrangements this particular piece is uh one that i would like to get into now and I want you all to check out his symbol. I want you to check out his symbol work um, and listen to how he keeps the time um, with, 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 with the Fletcher Henderson band here, okay? Okay, so I, I want everybody to understand something. All of you young drummers out there, I want you to understand we're going to historically contextualize the actual sound of the instrument. So when you're playing jazz age, big band music, music from 1924, 25, 26, 27, you're not going to, you, 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 if you want to be true to the sound, you don't want to play the ride symbol. You don't want to go into ride symbol beat. You don't want to get too deep into later, later uh, uh, innovations to the drum kit. So you want to be able to deal with the press roll and you want to be able to deal with the tube and you want to be able to have a, a very strong independent right foot, right? The bass drum, because we're coming from a March tradition and understand that the, the, the actual hi-hat, the way that we know it right now was not invented until the late twenties, right? Which means those drummers who came out of that earlier period, Kaiser Marshall, your Walter Johnson's, your, your uh, Chauncey Morehouse's, these people did not really get deep into the hi-hat, but they had a lot of nice cymbal work and they had a, a, a lot of nice uh, 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 snare drum work between the bass drum and snare, okay? So you wanna keep that in mind. So you wanna be true to the, the historical contextualization. So, but let's move on. Let's move to the, the period of the music that people, that, that, that is considered the most uh, popular period for, 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 for big band music. And this is the swing era. We're gonna get into a drummer right now. Uh, let's listen to Joe Jones, okay? Let's check him out on a tune called The Jitters. And let's, let's hear how he plays the hi-hat, right? Let's check him out. All right, so Joe Jones, he's credited for being the first to play the hi-hat. I, I, I think he was the, the first to play the flip on the hi-hat to, to one of the first to, to play what I like to call the flip. When you hear kind of how we, how we play the ride symbol now, he played on the hi-hat. Now notice he played that entire piece on the hi-hat the entire time. I mean, and you notice how he brought the band in for the shout, right? He didn't do a lot, but he did enough for the band to know something's about to happen. And we gotta get we gotta get more intense because Joe Jones has opened the door. He's opened the door for us to do that. Okay? Let's check out Splanky. Well, actually, before we get into Splanky, I want I want to get into I want to check out Gene Krupa, right? With the with the Benny Goodman big band. 1935 this version of the king porter stomp now i want you all to take clo play close attention to how gene krupa is going to play different in each section each section is going to be played different he's going to play something different a different way of keeping time within each section and i also want you to hear how he sets up the band with this with just one snare drum shot pop not a lot of stuff just pop one snare drum hit Okay, check them out. That's some orchestration, folks. Gene Krupa orchestrated that band in a brilliant way. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. 
Okay. I want to go to, let's check out Splanky. Oh, I want you all to notice when Sonny Payne and, 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 and the, what I observe about these great drummers is that they don't play the entire feel. They don't play the entire feel at the same volume, right? So if it's a two bar feel, it, you, it, 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 you, you almost, you lean on the, the hit that's going to set the band up, right? So you got do, 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 Let's go to another tune. We gotta listen to this stuff. I want I want to go into some some Duke Ellington. I want you. To, I want us to listen to some Sam Woodyard. And I noticed when 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 a, when a lot of young folks that I work with, they 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 don't they don't want to be they don't want to be able they don't want to play something that feels easy, right to the limbs. But I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes that's what the band needs, and what we have to do. We have to teach ourselves to sacrifice for the band the greater good of the band what do they need what do they need and hopefully the band will, will, will be able to articulate that to you um but we have to make our we have to make these decisions based off of the music that we hear and based off of what we're playing to know what they need right to give them what they need and sometimes it's the easiest thing it's the easiest thing technically to play Coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check out Spanda. Smarter. So anybody to tell you that playing two and four o'clock is corny, not happening, don't believe them. Just play any Duke Ellington with accompanied by Sam Williams. Okay, so I, I want to know if there's any questions right now before we continue on. Is there any questions? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Come on um, with it. So someone was asking about uh, dealing with young drummers who who play too much and too loud. Right. Yeah, so you have to, we have to get our young young folks to understand that, again, you're playing for 17 people. So if you're playing busy, the busier you play, the less, the less um, transparent what you're, the message you're trying to get across it will be, right? And we have to we have to sit down and listen to this these records with our young folks and 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 dissect what 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 the what these drummers are doing and why it works, why Duke Ellington used Sam Woodyard, why did he play with uh, 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 why, why, why did Sonny Greer and, 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 and Louis Belson play with him? Why did he trust them? Because they did what they needed to do to service the music. Sometimes the clock is all you need when it's swinging and your students have to know that that's cool. That's okay. It's this idea of it having to feel like it's challenging in order for it to be acceptable. Sometimes the easiest thing to play is the most necessary and correct thing to play for the music, okay? So that, as far as that goes. Also, you have to help your students to understand that there's a liaison between the drummer and his and her instrument or, or their instrument, right? So you, you're playing with, you're using a stick to hit something metallic or something that is, is, is supposed to be, is a stand-in for a, a, a calf skin or some type of skin, right? Everyone else is using the softest part of the, one of the softest parts of their body to create sound, right? Metal to soft flesh, reed, wood to soft flesh, right? Finger to, to soft flesh to, to, a metal, to, to, to a metal string, right? So they have to understand that these people cannot compete. Horn players cannot compete with a drummer. You will lose. You will lose. So they have to understand that they will be heard and that they that the volume that they're playing at is usually too loud. 
it's usually too loud. Intensity and volume are two different things. They have to be made helped to understand that. Okay. Yeah, we had an, another question too. Um, you were, I mean, you're talking about Ellington band, and I think about this in particular, but dealing with uh, big band charts uh, for for young people, especially for directors out there, like you know, if you had that the uh, Smata chart, you know, it, it would have every little thing written out exactly, you know, but how do you, how do you, do you coach that and deal with the drummers in that situation? Well, on? that's a great question. Now, this is a language thing. Usually drum parts is too much information, way too much information. The thing about the drum, the drum, the drummer has to interpret. And the only way you can interpret is by having what we call reference points, right? It's interesting. Um, what's written a lot of times, it's just a guide, right? And the more you listen to the music, the more you know what to do. All you need is all you need is whatever hits the, the, the whatever hits the 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 the, the horns ha may may have. And the reason why we do have charts in the first place is, is a roundabout way. We don't want to waste, we don't want to waste any time. I mean, many of these cats, they didn't have charts like Sonny Greer. He, he didn't read Duke Ellington charts because they were playing so much that he just orchestrated, you know, he just would orchestrate. Right. So it's, it's very important for your, your drum students to really sit with the music and listen to it and get an understanding of what to do what not to do it's very important it's very very important okay i think that's all the questions we have for now yeah okay okay cool what i want to do is i want i want to go to when we were talking about a, your palette of, of of sounds being able to create uh different sounds using your instrument using your you're using your your symbols using your toms using uh, uh, all, all in service of the melody, all in service of the tune. There's a, there's a, a master. The masters at that. One of them was uh, the great Mel Lewis. Now we're dealing with swing here, okay? Uh, we, we, I'm not getting too deep into the more uh, contemporary straight things. We, we, we're talking about the, the, the building blocks, right? Uh, to big band playing. And I want to play a tune entitled Young Blood. And this is a this is from it was originally recorded with the uh with with with, with the Ken the uh um the, the Stan Kenton band, excuse me, <laughs> brain fart. Uh, and Jerry Mulligan had his own band uh, of um, kind of a, a larger ensemble and i want to play this for you all i want you to listen to how mel lewis uses his symbols and how he sets up the band and just tenacious swing and this predates his time with the uh mel lewis thad jones orchestra okay he spent some time with kenton So, so when you all hear when you all hear those, there, there's specific things that, that you're gonna always get, uh, uh, that you that you're gonna see in big band music. That's gonna Thank be you. I got a bit puzzled it's gonna there. be there. I I lost my place. And you you want to get your eyes used to seeing, and you want to get your more importantly your ears used to hearing, um, off beats. Uh, uh, that one two three four and and and. Uh, that 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 dotted quarter note to an eighth note. That 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 Charleston. Eh, 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 eh. Like you're gonna see those things, right? You don't want to have to necessarily think about what to play, but you just want to know whatever you're doing is aiding the band in playing those figures. When you hear those things, okay? Mel Lewis mastered that. Check him out. The only way I can tell you is by listening to it. Don't let me don't don't let me shape your opinion on him. Now I want to go to one. We don't have a lot of time. I know. 
I, w I have one more slide I want you all I want you all to check out there's a there's, there's, sometimes the grooves that we come up up with they should help and aid what's happening with the ensemble right what's being played Oliver Nelson one of the great unsung heroes of big band arranging uh of of the 50s and 60s uh and and and, and later he he had a, a fantastic drummer by call number one call by the name of grady tate now this is a tune called maddie t i just want you to hear this groove and how it fits in 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 into the 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 actual piece the the, the melody and, and content within and also listen to how grady sets up the band beautifully check it out Yeah, if you don't feel good after that, I don't know. I don't know what else. But I, I just want you to notice how that groove fit with the melody, right? This it's, is all about aiding the band. This is all about giving the band what they need. And to your question, Andy, that that's what that's the answer to that question. Does the band need you to be playing this loud? Does the band need you to play soft? Does the band need you to set us up? how does the band need us to set us need to be set up at this particular moment we have to understand that this is a team right a 17 18 piece team and we need you to do what you can to assist the team right right okay so i i, I want what i want to do is i want to get i want to go into our last uh two slides i want i want to i want i want you to see the the greats here i of course th these are the great big bands um there there are a lot more but these are some of the ones that have really really left a heavy impression on me myself and and and, and thousands and millions of others and you know i'm i'm going to uh make a, a pdf of this and send to to andy so you can get give it to your students um you know you take a quick gander at that of course some are are left out here um these are some of those bands uh great clark terry had a fantastic big band Big bad band, um, of course. Andy Kirk and his in the Clouds of Joy uh, band that uh, Mary Lou Williams comes through. Um, Kenny Clark had a fantastic band. Big band, Clark and Bowling big band, amazing. Frank Sinatra, the, the the various big bands that supported him. Um, amazing okay so let's get into the drummers here let's check out the, let's check out some of the great drummers um by no means is this everyone this is this is barely scratching the surface jeff hamilton's not on here um he's a humongous influence but we have some of the great some known some lesser known I think Clarence Plan Pen does fantastic work with the Maria Schneider band. He's not on here. Um, Charlie Mingus, his amazing band. Um, Danny Richmond and the lineage of that band, Adam Cruz and John Blake. But these are some of the bands and these this is you know these are these are some of the people uh davy tough man had an amazing beat check out some of some of some of those those uh dorsey recordings and benny goodman nick fatul with benny goodman they davy davy tough with ben thick pen great ed thick pens 
father with with the with, with the Andy Kirk band. Uh, you know, these are these are the these are these are the cats, and and and, and I think uh, they 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 should be studied and and, and checked out. Okay. I do have a couple questions. Good. Here. Um, this one might be a little bit of a quant. This is a this is a tough one. Uh, says someone was asking is if there was only one record song artist you could listen to, which one would it be and why? Maybe even just with big bands. If you had to point somebody towards one drummer, who would that be? If that's possible. Wow. For for big band playing. Yeah, I, I, I can't I can't give you one drummer, okay? I can't I can't do that. But I think I think if I can't really do that. I mean some of my favorites I, I mean some of my favorites would be uh Sonny Payne and Joe Jones. I think Man, that, that's a tough question. I would be leaving so many people out. Like Rudy Trailer, I love him. I love, I love, I, there's certain big bands I love, and I love them, and they have great drummers. Like uh, Earl Father Hines, I love his big band. So I love Rudy Trailer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's some amazing Kaiser Marshall. If you guys get, if you guys get an opportunity, pick up this uh, Fletcher Henderson uh, box set called study and frustration it's amazing um grady tate the work that he did with uh man with 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 oliver nelson it's just absolutely amazing i love chick webb hurling riley is 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 one of the greats to me for big band uh sam woodyard you can't go wrong with him i think i think certain drummers for certain things too like when I think about uh, Sonny Sonny Greer, man, he has a he has a very unorthodox way of playing, right? Um, and I think I think part of it is he jumped on the scene at such an early stage in in the development of the art. Right? He he does things his way. He has his way of doing things, and it's 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 all good. It's very unorthodox. Buddy Rich, you, I mean swing and then he can he can he can completely completely uh obliterate <laughs> you know any 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 kind of chop you can think of like i mean he has he has he has every you know it's it's, it's too many people i'm sorry jimmy crawford's too beat it's just it's too many people. I'm sorry, I, I I didn't answer your question. Now you got to go buy records from all all of those people. Mel Lewis, man, you can't. That that is a difficult question, regardless. Of it's tough, but thanks for thanks. I appreciate that. Um, got another question asking: Can you talk a little more about your concept for playing in an earlier pre-big band styles, a la Baby Dodds and Andrew Hilaire? Okay, so. You want to check. You want to. You want to be able to deal with that combination of keeping time with your right foot and your left and your and your hands. That that's just important. I'm breaking. I'll, I'll break down the uh, the technical aspect of it. You 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 have to you have to be familiar with marches. You have to be able to march, and you have to be able to play what's called a shimmy beat. That is quintessential, right? And you and you have to work through symbol. You have to have symbol work, and the only way you can do this is by listening to who did it before you, um, before us. Uh, if you, if 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 you can get the records, if you can if you can get, uh, if you can get hot sevens, if you can get if you can if you can go pick up. Uh, Tubby Hall playing with 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 Louis Louis uh, uh, Louis uh, Russell Lu, Lu, Louis Russell if you can with with, with pops it, um, check out Kaiser Marshall Walter Johnson with 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 the the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra check out 
the 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 smalls the sm- the first smalls big man with charlie johnson you got to check these these earlier these earlier bands out right you got to check them out in order to be able to deal with these different grooves and you'll come up with your own concept when you listen to these recordings but you got to you got to have that that shimmy and that 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 march swing thing happening between your right foot and your hand you got to be able to do that to give the right feeling so that the band will articulate it's all for the band <laughs> it's all for the band you have to, the band will articulate the right way and to be able to have a little bit of symbol work <laughs> You got to be able to do that. Then you'll start to appreciate drummers like Chick Webb. And you'll start to appreciate drummers like uh, uh, Joe Jones. And then you'll start to appreciate drummers like Harold and Riley coming directly from, from all of that. Uh, Harold Jones. You'll start to appreciate the lineage because you'll hear shades of everyone in, in the earlier people inside of those who took it to, the, to that next level. Awesome. I think we have... Uh, one more question and then uh, then we'll probably need to wrap up but uh, I just have a question about sort of the evolution of the bass drum especially when it relates to two big bands where it went from like a really functional role and like supporting the bass and as we went to um, you know more amplified music and and you know even into electric stuff how that changes the role of that bass drum well okay so again again dealing with the evolution okay so there was a a technique that was used in early jazz called double drumming right double bass drumming right double double drumming but not in the term in the way we see it right like how it used how it is now where drummers would put the drum the snare drum on a on a on a chair right and put the bass drum on another on a on a stand right similar to a a a a a marching or orchestral situ like type stand and would play the the bass drum with the left hand right while playing the snare right so that in itself was something that you hear if you go check out early the the first jazz recordings in in in, in Tony Sabarbra, uh, um, uh, the original Dixieland jazz band, you'll hear that right. Until someone came up and and invented the bass drum pedal, to give you know to make that job much easier. So understanding the te- that type of technique and what you can and cannot do will help inform how you approach playing the instrument in earlier jazz settings. Does that make sense? So that's how that evolved. Now, when you listen to earlier musics, when you listen to uh, Tony Sabarba, when you listen to Chauncey, Chauncey Morehouse, right, with, with some of those earlier Bix recordings, when you listen to Baby Dies, when you listen to Zudi Singleton, you will understand why their bait, why the, the 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 technique that they used, it's it's into it's considered limited today by today's standards. When you have Virgil Donati and, pe- and people who can use double bass drum real fast and do a lot of a lot of like technic technical, have a serious technical prowess. Um, even with Louis Belson and, and and Sam Woodyard with the double and Speedy Jones, Rufus Speedy Jones with the double bass drum pedal. But when you when you think about the beauty that was in how the earlier drummers used what they had to come up with some some serious orchestration, serious um, serious p- p- playing uh, uh, um, with with what limited means they had, it's it's absolutely amazing. And to be able to incorporate that in your playing, it's going to help aid in in your understanding of the instrument and and also to help aid the band in 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 their phrasing you know playing these 
earlier styles of music. Great. Thank you. Um, I think that's about all the time we have for tonight. I want to say, uh, first of all, a big shout out and thank you to Jerome for being with us tonight and sharing such fantastic information. Mm -hmm.